Moscow, capital of Russia, a gigantic metropolis with over 12 million residents. The subway system is just as impressive as the city itself. Up to 9 million people ride the Moscow Metro every day. It is considered the fastest, safest, and most punctual subway in the world. For the staff, this means a great deal of stress and the challenging task of making the right split-second decisions. In the middle of the platform, use the downward escalator. An exclusive behind-the-scenes glimpse of the Moscow Metro, now on Giant Hubs. Moscow, early morning. The gigantic city is still sleeping. But deep below the surface, the metro system is already waking up. The Moscow metro network has 12 lines with 365 kilometers of track and 212 stations. The massive system is managed in incredible detail by a control center in the heart of the city. To ensure that the over 600 trains are ready for service, 17 depots are assigned to the individual lines. One of the largest is Vikano Depot, 4.30 in the morning. 36 trains are kept here in the depot. Despite the early morning, it is already bustling with activity. All of the coaches here travel line seven, the most frequented line with 1.5 million passengers every day. Driver Pavel Mayorov has the early shift today. I have 45 minutes before I have to drive off. The Moscow Metro requires each driver to have a medical checkup before starting their shifts. Only drivers that are 100% healthy are allowed to control the trains. Are you having any problems? No. How long was your break? 19 hours. Good. No other subway monitors its drivers as strictly as the Moscow Metro does. And it works. In over 80 years, there hasn't been a single accident caused by a train driver. After passing the checkup, the shift supervisor gives Pavel his route. You have route 33. The train is in the 14th bay. Your train is ready. Have a safe trip. It is 4.55 a.m. Pavel needs to be on the route in 20 minutes. As the driver, he's the one responsible to make sure the train is functioning properly. The train finished its self-diagnostic. Everything's okay. I can depart. I just have to apply the high voltage and wait for the light to turn green. The trains leave the depot every minute. Pavel has an eight-hour shift ahead of him. It's estimated that he will transport 10 to 12,000 passengers from point A to point B today. In 15 minutes, the trains must be distributed throughout the entire rail network. Then the metro begins service. One of the largest stations is Komsomolskaya station. It is the transfer point for two main lines and is located between the three most critical long distance train stations in Moscow. 5.30 a.m. A crowd of people is already waiting at the entrance. At night, the stations are closed. Travelers are first allowed in in the morning. 
Anyone who wants to get to the trains first has to pass through one of the 3,100 electronic ticket gates. Passengers pay the equivalent of 75 cents per trip, no matter how far they ride. From here, it goes deeper. The Moscow Metro is one of the deepest subway systems in the world. Komsomolskaya Station is 37 meters underground. When it was built in the 1950s, the architects attached great value to pump. The mosaics are up to three meters high and contain several hundred thousand stones and designs depicting victorious Russian battles. One hundred seventy thousand passengers board and alight here every day. Natalia Goncharova is the head of the station on duty. Her main job is to direct the masses of people. My work actually isn't that difficult. The important thing is that I'm reliable and above all careful. The people here are stressed out. It's my job to ensure that there aren't any problems. I always have to be alert. The first onslaught is over. Now there's a short break before rush hour begins in just over an hour. Natalia uses the time to perform a walking inspection. It's important that all operation rooms are locked. Natalia meticulously checks each corner of her station. In the process, she also keeps an eye out for suspicious objects. Everything is okay here. The metro is filling up. To manage the masses, the trains arrive every 90 seconds. By the way, there is no timetable. A clock simply displays how much time has passed since the last train departed. The Moscow metro is 99.9% .9 on time. That's a world record despite the fast pace and the large number of passengers. To ensure things stay this way, Natalia checks the schedule regularly. Each train is only allowed to stop at the station for 30 seconds. And I'm checking to make sure everything is going according to schedule. And of course, I keep an eye on the passengers. If a train deviates from the schedule, Natalia reports it to the control center immediately. It's located in the center of Moscow. And it is the brain of the metro. A staff of 30 people directs and monitors the entire subway network here, sealed off from the outside world. When dispatcher Albert Kurashin's phone rings, it is never a good sign. <laughs> I see all the trains and stations on the monitor. I see how the trains are moving and compare it to the schedule. I use these plans to organize operations. If there is a disruption, like there was just now, I immediately give the trains on the route new instructions. Similar to an air traffic controller, dispatchers need to keep an eye on all their trains. That is the only way they can react in time. When there are slight delays, they instruct the drivers to shorten stops at stations in order to make up time. There are always two dispatchers responsible for one single line. This is due to the unique way the metro system is set up. The 12 Moscow metro lines work completely independently from each other. Each line has its own self-contained route system, including stations. At intersections, the tracks run on different levels. This eliminates failure-prone switching systems. If there is a delay on one line, the other lines are not affected. But problems can still crop up at any time. That's where the dispatcher comes in. 
I have been working as a dispatcher for one and a half years now. The hardest part is staying calm when there are breakdowns or other unusual situations. I monitor the whole line, together with other departments. Part of my job as a dispatcher is to remain calm and clear and give the proper instructions. Otherwise, I could make the others nervous. So far, I have been lucky and have not experienced any seriously difficult situations. The worst was when one of the trains had a malfunction and I had to organize operations during this disruption. The Moscow Metro is the most frequented subway in Europe. Its design is impressive. The first line opened in 1935. It was 11.2 kilometers long, and with 13 stations, it connected what were then the most important points in the Russian capital. A short time later, the first section of lines two and three were built. Additional sections of the routes even opened during World War II. The metro has been rapidly growing ever since. By 2030, the government wants to expand the total distance of the routes to over 450 kilometers. The subways in Paris, London, Berlin, and Madrid serve as a model for the Moscow Metro. At the end of the 1920s, the government sends engineers to Europe disguised as workers. With the knowledge they gain there, they develop a subway that is perfectly adapted to the city of Moscow. The goal is to make the Moscow Metro not only better than all the others, but also to impress the world with its beauty. Stalin summons the best architects and artists in the country for the station's interior design. After a record construction time of only three years, the first section opens on May 19, 1935. It passes right underneath the center of Moscow. To this day, the Moscow Metro is considered the most beautiful subway system in the world. 44 of its 212 stations are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The paintings and mosaics of each station tell an own story about the heroes of the Soviet Union. Four hundred thousand square meters of marble tiles are used in all the stations. An artistic aesthetic is important even in the modern stations. It is now nearly eight o'clock. The Russian capital is awake. Millions of people want to go to work or school now, not just on the roads, but beneath them. Rush hour is also in full swing. Around two million people ride the Moscow Metro during morning rush hour alone. On weekdays, this amounts to a healthy total of 9 million passengers, which adds up to a total of 2.3 billion passengers per year. Even though trains arrive every 90 seconds, space is getting tight in the rail cars. During rush hour, an average of nine passengers share one square meter of space. Komsomolskaya station is an important junction in the subway system. An increasing number of people are now arriving from the three surrounding intercity train stations. Acting station head Natalia now has to intervene and direct the streams of passengers.
Dear passengers, the exit to the city and the train stations is located in the middle of the platform using the downward escalator. Natalia closes the main exit. Until now, passengers were able to both enter and exit the station using the main entrance. By closing the entrance, Natalia has now changed this path into a one-way street. Anyone who wants to exit must now take a detour through the adjoining Red Line station. The measure is effective. The congested flow of passengers is breaking up. Eight o'clock, shift change. Natalia is finished for the day. Her colleague, Irina Bovachova, takes over. All trains are running on schedule. Okay, no interruptions? No interruptions. No, everything is on schedule. Do you have the key? There's not a lot of time to talk. Around 30,000 passengers get on the metro at the station during morning rush hour. And Irina is responsible for making sure nothing goes wrong when they do. I watch things, like how passengers board and alight to make sure that they don't get stuck in the door and that the doors close in time. Arena is also the point of contact for passengers with questions. The busier it is, the more problems and questions there are. But it's not really that stressful. You have to be polite and treat people with respect. That always works. Sergei Bakhmetyev is a food delivery boy. The quickest option for traveling to his customers is on the subway. I have an order in the Volga Greca district, about 40 minutes by car, and much faster with the metro. Sergei needs to ride six stations and change trains once to get to his customer. The ride will only take 20 minutes. Sergei travels around 70 kilometers with the metro every day for work. That is significantly longer than the average distance a passenger rides, which is about 15 kilometers. After four minutes, Sergei has already reached his transfer point. He has to walk more than half a kilometer to the next train to continue his journey. I still have four stations to go. To keep the flow of people under control, the metro has a signage system for pedestrians at all transfer points. Following them is highly recommended amongst these masses of people. Sergei needs seven minutes to change lines. He does not have to pay again. The ticket is valid until he leaves the metro, no matter how often he switches lines. At the next station, seats open up, but Sergei doesn't sit down. They need to be available for older people, pregnant women, and women with children. That's why I'm standing. It's an unwritten rule that Moscow residents find important to uphold. After just 19 minutes, Sergei has reached his destination. From here, he just has a short walk to reach his customer. He gives them a quick call. 
Здравствуйте, я такой Лерас Дирвик Лаб. Буду у вас э, число 5. Да, все, хорошо. He makes an average of seven deliveries each day. The first one is now complete. Shortly after nine, dispatcher Albert Kurishin has his hands full in the control center. It's still rush hour. Dispatcher 3480, I'm listening. The train is back on schedule at Chalpika Station. Ramenki, how much of a delay does train 193 have on Route 78? A train just deviated from the schedule, and now I have to find out why. Most delays are usually caused by passengers, by the way. They simply need too long to board and alight. This is the busiest time. A huge number of people are traveling. The intervals between trains are very short. They can't be any shorter. That makes work during rush hour extremely stressful. The dispatcher is always in touch with all the stations and drivers on his line via radio. He has to coordinate eight stations, 14 trains, and 12,000 passengers all at the same time. In the case of a delay, he has to take countermeasures before the lag affects subsequent trains. When there are problems, I have to swiftly restore and organize operations so that the Metro can stay on schedule. In addition to regular traffic, the dispatcher has to coordinate frequent service runs and inform the head of station on duty about these. I just received a message about a train that will be passing through the station without stopping. Now I have to make an announcement that the passengers cannot board this train. Arena has to hurry. The train is expected to pass through the station in just three minutes. Dear passengers, the next train on the Kurskaya line is not stopping at our station. Please step back from the edge of the platform. I have to catch the train. Arena has to ensure that no passenger is standing too close to the edge of the platform. That was the dispatcher calling, because there will be another train passing through. He calls us, we have to come to the intercom, answer that we understood, document the time, and then check the train. It's 10 o'clock. The morning rush hour is over. Now, Irina can give her staff the order to unblock the main entrance and turn the escalators on in both directions again. He's now letting these passengers through. Afterwards, he will block the top entrance and, after the last passenger, he will switch the direction of the escalator. Irina made it. The flow of passenger traffic has returned to normal. Without any incidents, the morning rush hour has passed. To keep up with the increasing number of passengers, the city continues to expand its metro network. Alexei Matveyev is one of the engineers responsible. An elevator takes him down beneath the city, where the second circle route is being built. It should be completed by 2025. The construction site for one of the new stations is located in a total depth of 65 meters. Construction manager Alexei's team has been working on this station for four and a half years now. 
In the coming days, they plan to pour concrete for the platform and the stairs. This here is the boarding area. Passengers who want to transfer to Saviolovskaya station will take that path over there. Here in the middle we have an exit to the city. And at the end of the platform there is a second exit to the city. The station is expected to open already in six months. Still, a whole lot to do for Alexei and his team. Because the metro is so deep, the cladding is particularly important. The metal has to be welded very well so that no water can get through. The seams are good here. I think the customer will approve. The challenge for the engineers is the earth beneath Moscow, which is permeated by underground water courses and soft sedimentary layers. The only way to build a subway network is below them. The depth requires a special construction. One station consists of three tubes. The center tube serves as the platform. Colonnades connect the center to the outer tubes that the trains drive through. This is the only way the stations can withstand the pressure from the layers of earth. And the depth presents another challenge. Thousands of people have to get to the trains below, all at the same time. That is one of the exits to the city. The escalator here will be 99 meters long. That will make this escalator among the longest in the world. In the whole Moscow metro system, there are currently 734 escalators. Together, they are more than 30 kilometers long. Only 15 of the 212 stations do not have escalators. To prevent accidents, an attendant keeps an eye on the escalators. Galina Kosareva has done this job for over 10 years. The thing that frustrates her the most is that some people think she just sits around. I think my work is relatively demanding because of the human factor. I monitor how passengers conduct themselves on the escalator. Anything could happen. I have to pay constant attention so that I can stop the escalator in time if there's an emergency. I watch the monitor and the escalator at the same time. People come with children, with suitcases. There's also train stations here. And there's just a lot of people. To transport the masses of people, the escalators in the Moscow Metro have a special feature. They are nearly twice as fast as anywhere else in the world, with a speed of 3.2 kilometers per hour. The area where the escalator ends is the spot I really have to pay attention to. It's always possible for something to get stuck there or children want to play here. Anything could happen. It is pretty dangerous. Several years ago, the Metro tried to replace the escalator attendants with computer systems. But the passengers protested. They didn't feel safe anymore. 12 noon in Komsomolskaya, on-duty station head Irina doesn't have time for a break. Komsomolskaya, Volvochova, go ahead. 
I'm currently on rounds to check the operations rooms. Once per shift, Irina has to check all the operations rooms. This here is the boiler. I'm checking to make sure that all the equipment is working, if everything is shut off. It is also important that the electrical devices are dry and situated on wooden boards, so no one gets an electric shock. Everything is okay. The tap is also not dripping. The technology in this room is in stark contrast to modern subway and control systems. But thanks to daily monitoring and maintenance, everything works flawlessly. Irina keeps her eyes open to notice anything during her rounds. Throughout the station, several cleaning teams are constantly at work. The station should always be neat and tidy, no matter how many passengers. Arena's path leads her by a very special door. That's what is known as a structural steel door that can be used to close off the entrance in emergency situations. God forbid we ever have that type of situation. Thanks to these doors, all of the metro stations can be used as bunkers, even today. But their origin lies in World War II. Thanks to the depth of the stations, they were the ideal places to seek shelter during air raids. Within just two months, all of the stations that existed back then were retrofitted with these doors. When the city was bombarded by the German Air Force from 1941 to 1942, 500,000 people found shelter in the metro every day. There were concerts, film screenings, and infirmaries in the train stations. 150 children were born there during the war. The metro was the safest part of the city. Once a year, technicians test and maintain all the Moscow Metro's bunker doors so that they can function without any problems in case of an emergency. The engineers even install these types of bunker doors in the new stations. On-duty station head arena is still on her rounds. I really love my job. I like that I have to be very precise, reliable, and punctual for this work. I have to think and act at the same time. Thoughts, hands, feet, everything has to work simultaneously. I like that. As the head of station, Arena is responsible for all areas of the 19,000 square meter station. The rounds last one hour. Everything's okay. All the staff members are doing their jobs. Everything's the way it should be. Now, Arena also has time for a short break. One o'clock in the afternoon, the city center is quiet. The people bustling around here are mainly tourists. Most Moscow residents are now at work. Driver Pavel Mayorov's shift has just ended. A colleague takes his place during a stop at a station. This takes only 30 seconds. The train cannot stop for longer than that under any circumstances. My work day is over now. The shift actually went pretty well. There were a couple of minor difficulties. People are in a hurry during rush hour and are afraid of being late, but I made it. 
Everything went well. Pavel doesn't have to drive again until the next day. Drivers are required to have a break of at least 12 hours between their shifts. At the other end of the city, food delivery boy Sergei has another order. I have a delivery for a customer who would like food from a restaurant here. Sergei has to transport the food halfway through the city. He estimates the ride should not take him more than 30 minutes. Even though it's midday, the metro station is full. His train is one from the latest generation and even has a cell phone charging station. That is very practical because I need my cell phone for work. Not only can passengers charge their telephones, there is also free wireless access in all Moscow metro coaches. After 15 minutes, Sergei has reached his transfer point. He has to change lines again. This time, he is not so lucky with the type of train. These trains are really very old. They're uncomfortable and loud. If I have to make a call, I pretty much can't understand anything. Passengers have to endure up to 100 decibels of noise in the old trains. In comparison, the new trains emit only 55 decibels. A few minutes later, Sergei has reached his destination. In total, the Moscow Metro operates six different types of trains of various ages. Their service life is impressive. Each travels around 180,000 kilometers per year. When the distance is traveled by all the trains are added together, that's 108 million kilometers a year, or 2,700 trips around the Earth. Maintenance is divided up among the various depots. Each depot specializes in a certain type of train. Vladikino is one of the largest train workshops in Moscow. The mechanics here maintain and repair up to 30 trains every day. Mikhail Hertoskik is the workshop manager. Today, a huge maintenance project is scheduled for this rail car. Now, we'll start repairing this rail car. Today, we will take it apart, then check everything, and overhaul the train engine and the wheel set bearings. Every 560,000 kilometers, so around every three years, Mikhail and his team have to completely dismantle each train. It's complicated work, but that's normal for us. We do this to several rail cars each week. The team first separates the four-ton chassis from the pivoted bogies. The rail car is ready to be lifted. We do it in two stages. Mikhail and his team are tense. If the four jacking devices are not entirely synchronized, the rail car will tip. Is everyone ready? Okay, let's lift it. Mechanics monitor both sides while the rail car is being lifted to make sure that all the connections have really been separated. In 10 minutes, they've done it. 
The pivoted bogies are one of the most important safety factors and the wearing parts that are subject to the most stress. We took the wheel frames and wheel set bearings apart. Now my colleagues will wash the rail car, check the bearings, and perform an ultrasonic inspection of the axles and wheel frames. Tomorrow, we will put the rail car back together, and then it can get back to work on the line. Then, Mikhail and his workers can take on the next rail car. It is nearly 4 p.m. Evening rush hour is starting. Tens of thousands of commuters arrive at Komsomolskaya station, wanting to continue on to the surrounding intercity train stations. in the mornings. Now, in the evenings, they are tired from work. Rush hour traffic in the evening also takes longer than the morning commute, because people get off work at different times. Irina now focuses on the escalators again, the station's bottleneck. Now I will set two escalators to travel up. My colleagues stop the people so that they can switch the escalator's direction. The passengers then have to go to the Sokolnyshevskaya line to come here. The escalators are an important tool for Arena as she directs the flow of people. What time is it? 29 after? We'll wait one more minute, then we'll close it. No earlier. Right on the half hour, as discussed. The staff can reverse the direction of the escalator in just 20 seconds. Just as in the mornings, Irina makes use of the fact that both stations at this hub are connected by passageways. She switches the escalators the other way around. Now passengers are still able to leave the station directly. But anyone who wants to enter has to take the detour through the neighboring red line. Despite this, a long line for the escalator forms. This is not a good place for claustrophobic people. Trains arrive every 90 seconds and let out up to 1,000 people all at once. Nearly 25,000 people pass through the station by the end of evening rush hour. Just before 8 p.m. Now, Arena's workday is also over. In a brief handover, she tells her colleague about the work plan for tonight's shift. There is regular cleaning to do, but also a number of detailed technical inspections to carry out on the tracks. I don't know what I'm going to do now. First, I'll go home, then I'll see. I'm never tired when I'm at work. I only notice how tired I am when I get home. Arena now has a day off. Then she will return to another 12-hour shift. Night is falling over Moscow. 
the metropolis is slowly settling down. Only a few people are still underway in the metro. The team for the night shift is already waiting. At exactly 1 a.m., the police close the entrances. From now on, no one can enter the stations anymore. A half hour later, the last passenger leaves the station, even if it's not entirely voluntary. Now the cleaning team removes the traces of the 170,000 passengers. All 212 of the Moscow Metro stations are cleaned each night. Station head Rima Loseva is preparing for track maintenance, which is also done at night. This is because power to the tracks needs to be shut off for this task, impossible during the day. We've now received the order from the dispatcher to close the route. To ensure that no maintenance vehicles enter the tunnel, the station head puts up a barrier. A team of technicians only has three hours to check the rails in the area of the station and complete all the necessary maintenance work. Now we will check to see if the alarm system at the tunnel entrance is working. If you would, Olga. There is a sensor at each tunnel entrance that is set for the width of the train. If, for example, someone gets stuck in the doors and is being dragged, the sensor immediately sets off an alarm. The head of the station is obliged to check this system every night. Everything's okay. It works perfectly. Five o'clock in the morning, all the work is done. Everything is done. The passengers can come. Just 30 minutes later, the doors of the Moscow Metro open again. Europe's largest subway can now once again bring people quickly, punctually, and safely to their destinations, wherever that may be.